This map depicts global patterns of amphibian diversity. You can see that Tanzania and the southeastern United States have roughly similar amounts of diversity. Despite similar amphibian species diversity, Tanzania and the southeastern United States have very different climates. The wettest parts of the th southeastern U.S. receive more than 500 millimeters of rain annually than do the wettest parts of Tanzania. Additionally, Tanzania has a dry season from June to September where little to no rainfall occurs. Unlike Virginia, which has the highest diversity of amphibian species in the United States and where rainfall is consistent throughout the year. What does this overall lower rainfall in Tanzania mean for amphibians? Not only do amphibians have permeable skin that is susceptible to moisture loss, but they also generally require water for egg laying and tadpole development. How do Tanzanian amphibians circumvent this dependency on water? What adaptations do Tanzanian amphibians have that allow them to survive in a seasonally arid climate? Here are two extreme examples of amphibian adaptations to dry environments. Common squeaker frogs lay eggs in forest leaf litter instead of water, and tadpoles develop inside the eggs and hatch as miniature adults. Tornier's forest toad females retain fertilized eggs in their oviducts, where they go through the tadpole stage in safety, eliminating dependency on water for tadpole development. African foam nest frogs are another great example of adaptation to extreme heat and dry conditions. They can tolerate temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius internally, and their skin has special properties to reduce evaporative water loss. They are also able to blanch white, presumably to reflect direct sunlight. Thus, they are the only African frogs you might find sitting close to the hot sun at midday. African foam nest frogs deposit their eggs in foam nests constructed on vegetation overhanging temporary water bodies. Tadpoles begin development within the hardened foamed nest, and eventually the nest will decompose and the tadpoles will drop into the water below to finish development. Marbled snout burrowers have shovel-like snouts specialized for digging into moist soil to escape the African heat. They also lay their eggs in their burrows where tadpoles hatch and begin development. The tadpoles are eventually transported to pools to complete development when rainwater floods the burrows. If water levels do not rise enough, females may help transport tadpoles to ephemeral pools on her back. Like the marbled snout burrower, Bakaj's burrowing tree frogs also lay eggs underground or in a depression that will eventually become rain-filled. The eggs develop slowly and the larvae eventually make their way overland to pools of water to complete development. Adults have specialized heels to aid in digging and can form a cocoon of skin that helps prevent water loss during dry seasons. All of these previous examples are common frog species throughout Tanzania, but what species can you find locally at Enoshiva if you were to go hopping on a wet night? Here are just a few examples. But do any of these species have special adaptations to survive high temperatures and low water availability? While all of these species are typical of most amphibians in that they require water for breathing, Muller's clawed frogs can withstand high water temperatures and can burrow deep into the mud of drying water bodies to avoid intolerable conditions. In conclusion, morphological and behavioral adaptations in Tanzanian amphibians contribute to the maintenance of high speed diversity in the face of limited water availability.